So today, just uh, to introduce myself, uh, I'm Steve Pooler, Senior Account Manager with HSO. I've been working in the Dynamics community for uh, 20 years or so. Um, I recently joined HSO uh, at the beginning of this year. Um, my colleague Mark, if you just want to briefly introduce yourself, Mark. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Carey, Head of Optimizations at HSO. Similar to Steve, I've been working with Dynamics for 20 years now. Uh, I've been with HSO for 10 years this year, though, starting off as a senior finance consultant, but more recently heading up the optimizations department. Excellent. OK, so um, I'll just take you through the agenda. Um, and then I'll hand over to Mark, who will take you through uh, what we're talking about today, functional impact assessments. We'll follow that with a, a summary and Q&A. There's not too many people on the call, so happy to make this interactive. If you do have a question during the session, um, I think uh, uh, you can raise the hand or just let us know and uh, I'll make a note of it and I'll try and come back to you at the end. We'll make sure that we can try and answer it at the end. So um, this is the first of a series of monthly lunch and learn sessions. Um, today we're just going to be doing the, 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 the introductory session talking about functional impact assessments, how they link in with continuous updates. Um, next month um, to lead you on to a little bit, we'll take, be looking at some of the highlights and some of the most interesting new functionality and features which will be released in the platform update, um, the current platform update. We'll have a couple of those and then um, you know, looking to the future, dates to be confirmed, we'll be doing a session on fixed assets, we'll be doing a data a session on data. The idea is just to give you a flavour, a real taster, uh, of some of the breadth and depth of the, the uh, functionality within the Dynamics portfolio. So uh, I'll also point out we will be sending around, as this is the first one, we will be sending around a little poll at the end so you can rate our presentation skills. Uh, but actually what we're focused on is trying to make sure that this is, we get the content right um, and we can then roll this out to a wide, ever wider audience. So thanks very much for your time. Thanks very much for attending. Um, I'll hand over to Mark um, and uh, away we go. Thanks, Steve, and thanks, Debbie. Uh, again, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, I think I've worked with quite a few of you on the call before uh, and in my various roles at HSO. Uh, so hello again to those of you that I haven't met before. Welcome. Uh, if there's anything that you want to speak to about the today's session afterwards, I'm more than happy to uh, schedule follow up calls to just discuss it on a one on one basis. Uh, so functional assessment impacts are something that we're delivering as part of or in line with Microsoft's platform updates, continuous updates. Uh, hopefully most of you are aware of what these continuous updates are, but just to a brief summary, summary of them, the continuous updates or PU updates as they're called are Microsoft's way of delivering constant improvements to the system. Each release and, or PU as it comes out has new features and new hot, fix that's, uh, hot fixes that are cumulative since the last releases. Uh, and this is enabled through the cloud because it's software as a, of a service now and it's part of the extension full crack focused strategy from them. Uh, they provide flexibility in which updates you can take. However, there is a, a sort of strict uh, regime where you can only go up to three months without taking updates or you'll forfeit the official Microsoft support. For commerce implementations, it's up to seven. The deployment is automatic and Microsoft automatically apply these updates to test environments before they're applied to production environments, but you do have opportunities to intervene and postpone them. And if you on certain early release programs, you can get to see these releases earlier. Uh, in summary, there's eight of these service updates per year. These major updates are large feature updates in April and October, and those are the, the big ones that uh, take quite a lot. We generally recommend that you should be taking at least four updates per year so that you're not too far behind the hot fixes. Uh, and ob obviously this helps maintain testing timelines, etc. When these updates are done, the big thing that we always say is you've got to adopt a, a robust test approach. These updates are pushed through. Even if you don't take any of the functional features, these hot fixes, these uh, features that are automatically 
uh, applied and these really need to be testing. I'll mention later, but we have seen that some of the auto enable features can conflict with extensions or developments that you've already got. Uh, so functional impact assessment. So what is that? The technical upgrade is something that most of you do at the moment. So most customers have got either on a time and materials basis, they'll implement these technical up updates. If your IT department's big enough, you can do them yourselves or they're included as part of our foundation agreements. But there's also features, new features that are implemented on each of these releases, generally around 50 a time. Uh, some of them are auto enabled, so most of them are optional, but there's a lot of new features that Microsoft throw into these new features all the time. And a lot of the time they're getting missed. Customers will just concentrate on getting the technical upgrade done, worry about the features later. So what we're trying to do is offer a functional impact assessment where we can document all these features, go through them with you and see what could be of use. What we will do for each major release is create a template and I'll show you an example of this shortly that includes all the features included in the release, plus all the bug, bug features that are going to be included as well. We'll use this template as a basis for consultants and key system users, users to go through and assess it. And when I say consultants, depending on if you're still in a implementation stage, it may be the solution architect or key HSO consultants that know your system. If you had the system in for a while, it may be that we bring in support consultants who know your system or even optimization consultants that know your system to look at the features. But we need to do this in conjunction with your key users as well. Obviously, if we don't know your system and we don't know what features and modules you're using, we can't ascertain and do an impact assessment on what's going to benefit you a lot. So it needs to be a sort of an interactive program as well, just to see what these new features are, what we should turn them on or not. At the end of the day, the final decision is with you whether you turn these features on or not. Uh, if you do decide to do them, obviously you need to turn them on in a non-production environment and they need to be thoroughly tested. Most of the features are up to you whether you turn them on. There are certain features that are auto enabled by Microsoft uh, and when you review them, you'll see whether it's auto enabled. These are sometimes one you have to be very careful with. For example, I think some of you might already know this. I think in November last year there was a release where there was an auto enabled update to batch processing for supplier remittances. Uh, which was great and it was a useful one, but if you already had development around the batch process, uh, then it caused an issue uh, and we had to do developments and fix some of the, uh, the the processes around that. If we do decide to take it, sorry, I do apologise. If you do decide to take it, the uh, some of the features, then testing is the big thing you need to do. So there's various tools like the RSAT, the Regression Suite Automation Tool, and robotics pro process automation that will uh, change it to apologize on that. Uh, there are other external services as well that will help with uh, testing if need be. Uh, so these new features that come through, it's not just something that we can show you. You can actually view these as well. So within a D365 environment, you have a workspace called feature management. If you go to help and about, it'll show you what the latest version you're on. So whether you're on 10.0.24 or 10.0.25, and there's a link to the Microsoft website that tells you more detail. The standard workspace called feature management will give you more detail about the new features that you either already have activated or you haven't got activated. So this is the feature management workspace. It will show you the name of the feature, the status, whether it's enabled or not, what module it's in, uh, the date it was enabled for audit purposes uh, and also any extra notes effectively on there about it. So you can view this in any at your current version. You'll be able to see this feature management workspace and see what you have got. And I will encourage you to have a look through. And if you look at it and see that you've got 100 or 200 features that aren't turned on, you know, by all means, you can have a look yourself, but you can also contact us and we can review them and see what what may or may not be useful.
Uh, the website shows you the release dates for these platform updates and when they're due to come out. And you can get, as well as the feature management workspace in FNO, you can get a lot of information from the web. If there's a particular feature you need to, to research, just Google it. We'll find a page on Microsoft web pages sometimes that tells you the information. Uh, so this is an example of the sort of base spreadsheet that we'll generate. The first six columns on the left are the template that we will generate. So this is all information that you can get, but we'll bring it forward. We'll have the feature name, a feature description, any extra information that we've researched and found out about the feature. Whether the feature can be disabled or not, most of the features, if they're just standard features, you can turn them on or off. There are certain features, like I remember when Advanced Bank Rec came out, when you turned that on, you couldn't turn it off again. So it will, we will tell you whether you can turn it on, on or off or not. Uh, the module, obviously, whether it's retail, commerce, finance, supply chain, et cetera, and auto enabled. So that's an important one as well, whether these features get auto enabled. So effectively, you don't have any choice of turning these on or off. So the first six columns form what we call a template. The other three columns are what we will do with you on the impact assessment. So we'll do a high level impact assessment. It could be quite simple as no, there's no impact. If there is a feature to do with Russian VAT, more than likely you're not going to need it. There's going to be no benefit. There's no impact. We can just rule that one out straight away. Uh, if it is potentially going to have a, an impact on, on you, we can have a look whether that's a high, medium, low. And the same with the benefit. Is it a feature that, yes, you might want turned on, but it's not really much of a benefit or a feature that could provide a lot of benefit? Uh, and the last column is the recommendation is a simple would do we recommend you turn this on yes or no or is it something that we need more investigation on there are some features that are quite simple in what they do new fields new screens there are some features that have got a lot more work around them there's a new feature coming in for global inventory management that enables you to cost your stock at different costing methodologies it's definitely not one we would just recommend yes or no you need to do a lot of work and testing on that so once we've done the impact assessment on a spreadsheet obviously that's the detail of it what we will do is present it in a uh, powerpoint presentation as well so it'll be a powerpoint with summary presentations we'll detail what the impact assessment levels are for the the benefit analysis the recommendation for each individual module or area, finance, PMA, foundation, supply chain, et cetera, what we'll do is count up and do a summary of the number of features and do a one page summary of all the features. This example here, for example, there's, there was 75 new features that was coming through on a particular release. We recommended 16 of them were enabled. 38 were left disabled because there was probably either not relevant or no impact and another 21 to investigate. And again, from this, what we can do is either you can go away, turn it on in the test system, investigate it yourselves, have a look, or engage HSO to help you look at these uh, impacts as well. Uh, what we're trying to do with some of the bigger feature management is use utilize some of HSO's team to investigate these prior so that we have a bit more information for you. As I said, though, there could be 50 to 100 different features are coming out on each new release so it's impossible for us to know the exact impact every single one of these is going to have uh, but we'll try and assist as much as we can on that uh, so it's an optional thing the impact assessment as i've said it's something we can do for you you can look at trying to do yourselves if you don't do them what sort of impacts that's going to have uh, an obvious one is you could become out of date with any non-compliant or legal or country specific requirements. Microsoft do, however, try and make sure that any legislative requirements are auto uh, enabled. So that's a good thing in that, in that you won't become out of date with them. But again, as I mentioned before, if you don't know these are coming, you don't know they're going to be applied to a production environment and you haven't tested them, it can cause problems. So especially with VAT and tax and Brexit that's come in recently, there have been various changes that Microsoft have had to push through uh, and it's important to make sure we're on top of them. Uh, a simple one is you could just be missing out on important features and business processes that could be of benefit to your business. It's quite simple. Microsoft aren't just pushing out new features that they think will be useful. 
the forums, the feedback, the user groups, the recommendations that all get sent back to Microsoft, they're looked at. And when there are enough votes, votes are put through for features, they're added to the system. So there are a lot of features that a lot of customers throughout the world have voted for and asked to be on. And you can always have your own say if there's features you want included. There are Microsoft forums where you can ask uh, or you can come through to HSO and we can propose them for you and they get voted on. Uh, another issue if we don't look at uh, these features is that when you eventually come around to do it, you could have 100, 200, 300 to go through. And obviously it's a costly exercise to go through them all and to have a look at. The, another main one is that you may be paying for changes or developments on the system where unused features could also be there. We will try and do as much as possible and within rollouts of projects where gap analysis is being done, if there is a gap in a system, the solution architects and consultants will compare that gap against the features. Uh, but obviously, if you're in a stable situation and you're using a system and decide that you want a development, that might not automatically be that there isn't a database effectively that goes through every single feature release that you haven't got on. So it's just be careful sometimes that if you are looking to, for developments, make sure you look yourselves or ask or do some investigation to see is there a new feature that could be doing that or even do a search on the web because Microsoft sometimes release what these features are going to be months in advance. So you may want a development for a particular report, have a search around. It may be something that's being released in a couple of months, so hang on and wait for it. Uh, so a quick summary of all that. Functional impact assessments, they can be included in foundation agreements. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the PU updates, the cumulative updates can be done on a time and material basis or as part of a foundation agreement. Your account manager hopefully would have let you know about what foundation agreements are with regards to these releases. So the functional impact assessments can be included in that or can be uh, purchased as a one-off basis. There isn't a set price for them because obviously depending on how much functionality you use in the system, if you're just using the base system for finance and procurement, it will take a lot less time than if you're using a full retail supply chain warehouse management system. Uh, each of these new releases, as we've said, can, contains new features and hot feet hot fixes that have been implemented since the last release. The point of this is the smaller, the more regular updates that are generally isolated from your customizations. So it should be easier to manage and more robust, robust, sorry, than previous versions where there was just a big rollout of a new version like uh, AX 2012, R2 and R3, etc. Uh, taking timely updates should be a priority. So I would say even if you don't look at all the feature management, make sure you are taking these PU updates and keeping on top of it because you will get all the bug fixes uh, that, that comes through. Uh, and the deployment of this is automatic as well until unless you postpone it. Your system administrators should get emails from Microsoft when your UAT systems are going to be updated and then when your production systems are. So be careful planning around if you postpone these, if you take them, uh, but obviously the feature managements themselves have a look at them and it's up to you whether you take them or not. But be aware of the auto enabled ones because they're the ones that you have to take. Uh, Another quick slide on just some sort of summary benefits. So benefits of this proposed of this system, obviously there's more fr frequent feature updates than they were when you got a new release every one or two years. There's no large scale version updates now that we're just pushing out regular updates to it. Hopefully this would should improve and make a sort of a quality of service that is better. Uh, and it's more predictable effectively. You know what features are coming, you know what's coming through. Uh, and that should make your system more stable. You're not having massive big updates, uh, but you do have to manage it carefully. Forward testing as well is obviously realising that these features are coming through and making sure that everything is getting tested before it goes into a production environment. Challenges, there are some challenges. Obviously what we're saying here is you've got eight releases every year. We sort of recommend you take at least four of them. There is an overhead in testing here. We, you really need to test them. 
whether it's a small scale or a large scale, there's got to be some testing on this. And if that's something you can do yourselves with in-house tested, great. If not, again, we can look at helping you with testing resources from HSO or help with implementing RSAT or other external tents, tents, uh, testing mechanisms. Uh, the limited time is a factor is an issue as well. Unless you're on one of the early release programs, you don't necessarily get a massive amount of uh, time to do this testing. So that is something that has to be planned. Generally, what people will do is define which releases during the year they're going to take, try and make sure they get the pre-release version of that as soon as possible and have the testing planned out effectively. You may also need additional environments as well, depending on what environments you've got. You obviously want this released into a testing environment, but if you're having development work that's being tested as well, you don't want to sort of get them in conflict. So it may be that depending on how you have your system set up, you may need an additional environment just to, to go through the testing of this. Uh, and obviously with this testing, resource is an issue as well and planning. This all needs to be planned. You need to have resources for, to do this. ISVs are also an issue as well because when new releases from Microsoft come out, they have to update their ISV and make sure that fits in with your system. So this is something that can generally put things back a couple of months. And it's generally the one thing that makes the, the time a lot longer for putting these in. If you've just got a vanilla system with no code and no ISVs, you could just take the Microsoft release and it's fine. If you've got any custom code or extensions in there, you've obviously got to test that with it. If you've got an ISV with an integration or anything, they've got to test their version, their vanilla version of the ISV with the new release before they then pass it to you for you to test as well. So there's a lot of areas where we just have to be careful of. Thank you, Mark. Um, okay. I think we can just move on to the, the final slide if we can. If there was one. So. Um, as, as I mentioned, yep. um, the lunch and learn sessions are going to take up, broadly speaking, around about 30 minutes or so. Uh, we're targeting one towards the end of each month. Um, quite timely, um, we will be looking at some of the, what we consider to be the best new functionality, uh, which will be released within the upcoming wave one. Um, we're going to split that out. Uh, in June, we'll be doing a follow up session. Um, and we'll be picking particular topics and themes which we think through our uh, uh, discussions with our customers is some nice key features and benefits maybe in around the world of um, uh, uh, supply chain management uh, followed up by finance focused ones. Um, we will be running CE uh, focused uh, sessions as well for CE users out there as well and actually looking over the course of the months to come um, the wider dynamics uh, platform, looking at data, looking at power platform, modern workplace and so forth. So be really keen to get your feedback. Um, if you found this very uh, uh, beneficial, please spread the word. If there's anything specifically that you think would be useful addressing, please feel free to contact either myself. Uh, my email details are down there. Uh, Steve Pooler, Spooler at HSO.com and Mark Carey, mcarey at HSO.com uh, and we'll be delighted to put it into the agenda and um, publish it out there.